Bradley Metrock, CEO of Project Voice, this week in Voice Daily for Monday, July 26th. So I'm reacting today to two stories coming out of Alexa Live, the virtual conference that Amazon did last week, announcing a bunch of new features for the Alexa ecosystem. I've already uh, reacted to um, Alexa shopping actions, which is, to me, a great new announcement that Amazon rolled out last week as part of the 50 or so announcements for the ecosystem. Now I'm going to talk about one that sort of, I was going to, I, I thought I was going to be more upset at this. The more I've dug into it, uh, I'm not as upset. It just sort of it's worth unpacking a little bit, and it's how Alexa Live ends. I'm about to play the last few minutes of how the virtual event last week ends, and I'm going to be talking about it in some detail. So before I get into it, and the end of the conference that they did talks about um, open standards. Uh, the guy from Amazon, um, who's part of this event, goes in depth on the importance of open standards this new st standard called Matter that Amazon's working on. And then uh, another initiative that they've already rolled out called the Voice Interoperability Initiative and uh, a corresponding uh, publication they had called the Multi-Agent multi Device Guide, I think is what it was called. And um, it's an interesting way for them to end the event uh, talking about this and it's worth taking a moment to talk about. And some of the things that I hope that we see from Amazon if they want to move this direction, if they want this to be more than just words coming at the end of the presentation. Because let's not forget, why are they doing this presentation at all? It's because Alexa development had stalled out, it had plateaued, and Amazon knew they needed to re-energize the development community, re-energize companies, big, mid-size and, uh, and small, uh, looking at this ecosystem saying, hey, do we need to be playing here? And all of this comes amidst an environment that's growing more and more hostile toward big tech. So all of this is very calculated, but it doesn't mean it can't be good. And uh, we don't have to be completely cynical about Amazon and maybe their willingness to embrace some open standards. We're going to talk more about it. I'm going to play this video. So this is the very end of the Alexa Live event from last week. Alexa also continues to expand its smart home capabilities. We have always believed in creating an open smart home environment. We believe that by supporting multiple smart home protocols, we make it easier for device makers and developers to collaborate with Alexa and create innovative solutions for our mutual customers. We're proud of our collective progress. Together, we now offer our customers more than 140,000 Alexa compatible products. For the past year and a half, we... Okay, so the number of Alexa compatible products is great progress for Amazon, but I'm not entirely sure what statement that's supposed to make about their embrace of open standards. Uh, we're gonna keep going. And other leading smart home manufacturers have been developing a new interoperability protocol called Matter. The primary goal of this new standard is to make it easy for customers to know that their smart home devices will work with all major voice services. Okay, so I did not know much about Matter until this gentleman talked about it here in this presentation. So I went and looked it up and it is part of the Connectivity Standards Alliance. And this is a pretty interesting group. I don't have any complaints about this at all. There's a lot of big names, heavy hitters on here. Um, it talks about how they kind of gets in the weeds on how it's going to work. Uh, nice group of companies um, that are involved. And um, this looks good. Uh, I, I thought I would have more complaints. I don't. My, my main complaint with this is that I wish Amazon... Uh, were more um, collaborative with the Open Voice Network. Um, but we're going to talk more about that in a minute. I'm going to play more, more of this video. For device makers, Matter will significantly cut down the effort required to build a new smart home device. Today, I'm pleased to announce that we will be upgrading 
our Echo family devices to work with Matter. This includes most Echo and Echo Dot devices and all Echo Studio, Echo Flex, Echo Plus, and Echo Show devices. Okay, so this would be easy to kind of gloss over. Um, but basically, this is saying that these devices here will embrace this open standard to where if you had a Google, if you have mostly Google devices in your home, in addition to maybe one Echo Dot, they all are going to run on this Matter standard. So that's, a, you know, so it, it all will work together. That's my interpretation of this. Now, it, I don't know if it works like that in practice or not. I'm just learning about this. But uh, I actually view this slide uh, and even this gentleman talking about this as, as, a, as a gesture of good faith. Uh, because basically what we've seen until now is that if you buy one device or, you know, the reason why Amazon and Google both give away a lot of devices, is they know we get you hooked on one, you're going to convert the whole house into that. And an embrace of an open standard changes that dynamic completely. And uh, so it's a bit of a leap of faith for anyone participating in this. So, hey, uh, not bad. These changes will help millions of Echo customers set up and control Matter products easily with their Echo devices. We will soon be rolling out tools that make it easy for you to build Matter certified devices. And we are ready to start testing your Matter devices now. I'd like to close by talking about momentum and ambient computing beyond Alexa. To set the stage, we think there will be many winners in ambient computing, that there is ample room for Amazon and many others to solve hard problems for customers and build successful businesses using ambient computing and AI. <laughs> I, you know, I, I like the message. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's interesting. It's a fascinating way to close this event. And it by far has got my attention way more than the beginning did, because this is so clearly a uh, means of positioning Alexa relative to prospective, you know, potential legislation down the road. Hey, there's going to be many winners. We're going to win a lot. <laughs> and you might win a little. Uh, but there's room for many winners uh, if you want to be cynical about it. You know, no, I, I, um, I think if you wanted to take the opposite view, um, this is the first. Have you seen Apple talk like this? No. You know, the, have you seen other companies talk like this? No. Amazon, this is kind of unique. So you can be cynical about it if you want. It kind of it part of me does sort of gravitate that direction uh, because behemoth companies are who they are. But uh, but also this is kind of this is trying. So um, I don't know. I'm torn like an old sweater. I'm going to keep going. We expect multiple ambient assistants will become established over time and that each will evolve to have their own strengths and unique capabilities. For these reasons, we established the Voice Interoperability Initiative, or VII, a program committed to providing customers with choice and flexibility on the assistance that they interact with on a given device. We launched VII late in 2019, and I'm pleased to report that the program now has almost 90 members working towards this vision, including Facebook, Intel, Qualcomm, Sonos, Garmin, and other global brands. Here's where this needs to be tweaked a little bit, in my opinion. So um, I'm going to go back. And... The program now has almost 90 members working towards this vision, including. So the program now has 90 members. And who's the first one? Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. <laughs> uh, can we name it another big company that is desperate to avoid regulation? Yes, that would be it. So here's where a little bit more cynicism comes out. The name I need to be hearing here, I'm not hearing, and that's the Open Voice Network. 
part of the Linux Foundation. Many Alexa champions, people that this uh, that these folks know well, are part of this ecosystem. Uh, the Open Voice Network has created these working committees, um, all looking at different standards and how to approach uh, various uh, air domains related to voice ethically um, and responsibly. Um, Open Voice Network is the name I need to hear right here. I don't need to hear Facebook. Facebook is the last name I want to hear ever. Um, but the fact that they've managed to solicit other big companies, that does not make the statement of support that they think it does. We need to be seeing a range of players, uh, small, teeny, tiny, midsize, and large. And that's what the Open Voice Network has. Um, also, Open Voice Network needs to be working with this connectivity group behind Matter, uh, but that's a separate subject. Intel, Qualcomm, Sonos, Garmin, and other global brands. Working with this group of companies, we released the first version of the Multi-Agent Design Guide in 2020, which provides recommendations and best practices for delivering delightful customer experiences on devices that support multiple simultaneous voice agents. So yes, they did. And I covered this multi-agent design guide uh, in detail with This Week in Voice VIP, and I will link that newsletter uh, uh, issue in the description of the video. So all of this is like, um, it's why a conference like Project Voice exists. Alexa Live is great. Google, I.O. is great or other stuff Google does or Samsung or Apple, WWDC is great. But there's very sharp limits to how far it goes when it's the company themselves producing the content. This is why we have something called third-party validation. This is why... Um, you know, Amazon producing this multi-agent device guide saying, hey, here's how you need to operate if you're thinking about incorporating multiple agents. It's like China coming over here and saying, hey, you, if you want to be doing business around the globe, here's the rules you need to follow. Well, yeah, no thanks. Uh, we'll, we'll make up our own. Does that work? It's, reason, it's the reason why there's a Switzerland. A Switzerland it is a neutral third party territory <laughs> where a lot of treaties are negotiated. Why? Because they're equidistant and they're neutral and they, they don't have a vested interest. They're not one of these parties. Amazon, if they're serious about what they're saying here with all of this stuff, needs to get to handing this stuff off to voice and AI Switzerland, which is the open voice network. Now this con uh, connectivity alliance is uh, a Switzerland also. And you know the different Switzerlands need to come together. But um, open voice network is where um, at a minimum should be part of this voice interoperability initiative, if not entirely handed over to them with Amazon coming on board as a major participant in the group. So, um, you know, this, this is all fine and good, but they're starting to ram up against uh, the, the limits of, of how far uh, this can go. We're now starting to see the first products that align with this guide becoming available for customers. And we have breakout sessions later today where we'll share more details. We also launched a product called Alexa Custom Assistant or ACA back in January. This comprehensive solution makes it easy for any brand to create their own voice assistant with a unique wake word, voice, personality, and capabilities. It's weird to me that this Alexa custom assistant comes at the end, even after they, they've talked about this feel good stuff like the voice interoperability initiative. The Alexa custom assistant, as I commented also this week in Voice VIP, where I covered it in depth, is a product looking for an audience. Um, I don't think the Alexa Custom Assistant is very compatible with a lot of the ethos 
of the voice interoperability initiative. Basically what this is, is if you want a white labeled Alexa, if you want to use the Alexa technology and just kind of sort of not call it Alexa, but only sort of call on Alexa when it's critical, otherwise just make it your own assistant, um, you can do that. I don't, this, this gentleman goes on and talks about how they started with one big customer and now they've gotten a couple of others. I, I think it's going to be a grind for this. I think that the customers that they get will be some of those bigger companies like the customer they talked in this conference about is, uh, is Verizon uh, coming out with a smart display, and, which uses this Alexa custom assistant where you can talk to Verizon's assistant first and foremost, but then call on Alexa secondarily. And for big other, you know, other big time companies, maybe they can use this. But in general, um, either you're going to go with Alexa and you're comfortable with Amazon having access to your data, or you're not going to go with them at all. Like a white using Alexa white labeled does not solve the core problem that many people have with Amazon, which is that they are Amazon. <laughs> so, um, but the order of this is really interesting to me as well, that they just got done talking about uh, interoperability and shared standards. And then they, the, and then they talk about this thing, uh, this, this white labeled assistant, which um, is just designed to further Amazon's reach so that they don't have to do worry about any of that. So, Interesting end. Uh, you know, I don't mean to be too negative about it. Overall, Alexa Live um, is a strong showing. I'm going to get out of this. Um, it succeeded uh, almost uh, unambiguously in re energizing developer interest in the platform. I think we're going to see a lot more growth in the ecosystem. Uh, my hope for this stuff here is that um, Amazon continues to put, uh, continues to walk the walk rather than just talk. Um, and one big way and one extremely obvious way to do that would be to collaborate with the Open Voice Network in a meaningful and significant fashion. For this week in Voice Daily, thank you for watching. Until next time.